We'll do it maybe a couple times here.
is what we call nominations time. We are beginning to look forward to the next year. We are starting the process of looking at our different teams and committees. Some of those committees have you know, terms on them. Somebody serves on that committee for three years and then they rotate off, which means that every year we have an opportunity for new faces and new voices to join the mix. If you would like to serve in some capacity within this church, we would love to hear from you. If you pick up the path, our daily devotional this week, you'll find a half sheet in it. And that sheet lists many of the ways that you can serve within our church. Read over those op options. If something stands out to you, or if you think of somebody who might be a really good fit for one of them, let them know, let us know, we can always talk with them too. We would love to hear from you. So please take time to consider serving in different capacities. One of the ways you can serve is as a communion steward. These are folks who come uh, on Saturday morning usually to prepare all of the communion elements for the services over the weekend, and then they also help with certain services. So. Uh, the person who prepares on Saturday might also help serve communion during this hour on Sunday morning. We would love to have you help if that is something that you feel led to do. Okay, two things, I promise. Saturday, we have our values workshop coming up. This is an all-day event. It starts, I think, at 9 a.m. Nope, 8. 8 a.m., bright and early. There will be coffee and breakfast treats, sweets, you know, entice you out of bed, come. This is a very important workshop, and we encourage everyone to attend if you are able to. This is a congregation-wide workshop where we will look at who we are as Canyon Lake, what are our driving values, what are we wanting to do and be in our community and to each other. It's a very important time, so if you are available, please put your name down on the sign-up sheet. If you don't put your name on the sign-up sheet, but then find you're available anyway, just come. And bring your own lunch. We're, we're brown bagging it this time around, so bring your own lunch for that. Finally, next weekend is also something called so much to talk about. We have a lot of things that we need to update you on. And so after Saturday night service and between services on Sunday, we will have the exact same meeting where you are welcome to come and Pastor Scott and others will be updating us on all sorts of things around the church, including our roof, our finances, the security system, and a couple of other things that we just need to make sure we pass along to you. So everyone is welcome to come to both of those things on the weekend next week. We would love to see you there. Okay, I think I made it through. So while we begin our service, I encourage you to enter into a time of prayer with me. Holy God, we thank you so much for this time. We thank you for our ability to come together, to worship you, to be in your presence, and to feel you near. Fill us today. Open our ears as we hear your words. We pray this all. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to stand as we continue in worship this morning, singing Broken Things. It's never 
seated, unless you are a kiddo. It is time for kids. <laughs> this, this is where children belong. Welcome as part of the worshiping throng. Water, God's word, bread, and cup, prayer, and song. This is where children belong. Hello, good morning. Remember, I'm Miss Erin. I do children's ministry here. Why is there money? Such a good question. So, last week I had that jar and it had change in it. And we talked about how we shouldn't be greedy, right? Putting our hand in the jar and then it gets stuck. And that we should take what we need and be generous, right? So we're talking kind of about money again today. And what we're talking about is um, like your allowance. So how many of you get an allowance? Do you have chores that you do? Oh, good. And then do you get paid for your chores? Yes. You don't? Oh, rough life you have, Sawyer. I'm sure you don't have any toys either. You do? Oh, good. I'm sure everybody's family is different how they handle this. But I thought I'd share how we do it at our house. So we're Dave Ramsey people. Do you know who Dave Ramsey is? He's kind of a religious uh, financial advisor, I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, my husband and I did the class when we were dating. It's the one thing we don't fight about. So I, I, I um, recommend that. Anyway, they have Financial Peace Junior. And so we've gotten this for our kids. And one of the things in the kit is an envelope system so that when you get your allowance, you plan. What am I going to do with that money? Um, and the three things that they advise you to do is to, um, of course, spend it. But also you should save some and you should give some. Okay, so those are kind of the three. Hi. Oh, good, you're here, my Vanna. I, I replaced you with, she usually holds my props. I replaced you with a thing today, sorry. Um, <laughs> she's like, give it to me. All right, so I have the three envelopes, so it goes kind of like this. If I have my money, woo! Ah! If I have my money, how much should... What should I put in my spend? What should I put in my save? What should I get, put in my give? I love this idea. This is, it is a cool idea, right? Because then you're, you're planning this out. Now, obviously, you're going to want to spend some of it. So great, put some in there. If I have $60 here, oh my gosh, put 20 in there, okay. But, but first, actually, you would want to start with the save and the give, not the spend. I know that's, that seems backwards, but it's really better that way. They say you should put maybe 10% in your give package. I don't know if we can all afford that, right? But so what's 10% of 60 bucks? No, it's my money. I just grabbed. That's $6. So we put $6 in that envelope. We decide how much we want to save. Are any of you saving for anything? Taylor's saving for um, a Nintendo Switch. So then we put some in the save, depending on how much you want to put in the save. And then the rest you could spend. So the point is, is that if you, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. And you want to be responsible with your money. This is what God calls us to do. This doesn't seem like a God lesson, but in the Bible, God wants us to take care of our money, to do smart things with our money. Huh? Can I put it all in the save? You sure could. Could you put it all in the give? Absolutely. But let's be honest. We should all have a little bit of blow slash... That is Joe's. Okay, let's say a prayer. Are you ready? Dear God, managing our money is hard. Help us to remember the three areas that we should be thinking about and working on. Our give, our save, and then our spend. Help us to do that going forward. Um, also help us to just remember to think of others as we go forth in our week. In your name we pray, amen. Now if you would like a sheet to work on while you listen to the sermon today, I have a word find in this. I'll put it back in the Kids Center or in the Grace Space, okay? 
All right, let's head back to our spots. <laughs> Sorry, he's crawling along the side, okay? This is the time where I remind you that it is important for us to plan, and one of those things that we do plan is for our tithes and our offerings. Uh, there was a plate in the back of the sanctuary. I believe it disappeared. So if Miss Erin, <laughs> you can place your offerings in that plate as you leave the sanctuary today. That is just fine. I had it all prepared, and then we had to use that plate for first service. You know, it, you know the best laid plans. Sometimes they still get messed up, and that's okay. I invite you uh, to join together in prayer as we pray over the gifts that God has given us and that we give back to God. Holy Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you have given to us that we may then bless others. Take these gifts that we give and multiply them in service to your mission in this world and multiply what we do and what we give in all ways. Lord God, we ask this in your name. Amen. Okay. Today's scripture passage comes from Proverbs 13:16 and 21:5. The prudent all act intelli intelligently, but fools display their stupidity. The plans of the diligent end up in profit, but those who hurry end up with loss. As we continue our service this morning, we're going to enter into a time of prayer while we sing Living Sacrifice. This is a newer song. We have done it once before, I believe. So listen, absorb the song, absorb the words, and sing as you know it.
Would you pray with me? Holy God, we come here today from so many places. We come from work, some come from home. We come with all sorts of worries on our hearts. Fears and joys. Lord God, we ask that you would be present in this place. That you would fill our hearts with the knowledge of your peace and your love for us. We lift up to you the prayers of our hearts today. Those we have shared with others, those we have kept quiet to ourselves, those only you are aware of. Fill us. Fill our community. Be present with those everywhere who hurt, who are fearful, who don't know what's going to happen. We pray for those places that are war-torn. We pray for places affected by natural disasters. We lift up all those who are in mourning today. Lord God, empower your peacemakers. Send them out. Send us out as your hands and your feet, your voice and your love. We lift up to you today all of this as we pray to you how Jesus taught us, loving God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our second scripture comes from Acts 2, 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Last week, Pastor Scott began our new sermon series that's based on Adam Hamilton's book, Enough. And this week, we continue that. He laid for us a foundation that God loves us. No matter what, no matter where we find ourselves, no matter our situation, God loves us. Period. End of story. Which is really good news. Today, I get to get into a little bit more of the nitty-gritty. Today, we're going to be talking about wisdom and our finances. But before we jump in, I have a question. And yes, I am looking for a response, so just, just know that up front. I need a definition for a word, and that word is prodigal. How do we define prodigal? Extravagant? 
I think you're the closest I have ever gotten. So in the previous two services, this morning and last night, the definition we came up with was something along the lines of wayward. Or, actually, we got really close with dumb. Dumb was a good one. When we look at the story of the prodigal son, we often think the term prodigal has to do with the fact that he went out and then came back, kind of like a dog with his tail between his legs. The actual definition of prodigal as a noun is a person who spends money in a recklessly or wastefully extravagant way. Not always what we expect or think that the word means. Do we ever find ourselves living as prodigals? Do we think more about today and the instant gratification that our money can bring us rather than tomorrow? Do we make enough so we just don't need to worry about it? Do we find that uh, we let impulse buying rule us? We walk into the store with the list and we come out with everything that wasn't on the list. Do we find ourselves eating out more often than maybe we need to? None of these things are necessarily bad. Finding joy in life is not bad. But where we find our focus is important. There are two questions to ask. Is it possible that my habits are leading towards a financial crisis? If the car broke down tomorrow, or a medical bill showed up that I wasn't expecting, would I be ready? Or have I leveraged my future for today? And the second question, is regardless of that first question and its answer, am I making the most of everything that I have, everything that I have been given? These two questions are important because they are part of the first aspect of something that everyone should do with their finances, evaluate. We should all evaluate where we are because only when we evaluate can we truly understand what we are doing and what we should be doing. This evaluation is those questions that we just talked about, those two questions about financial crisis and making the most of everything, but it's also just looking at where am I spending my money? You open up your bank account and you can usually see, or you get your statement in the mail and you can see where you've been spending money. Where's it all going to? It's looking at how often am I eating out? When am I impulse buying? What are my habits? Do I use a budget? If I have a budget, do I stick to it? Two different things. Sometimes not easy. When we evaluate where we are, when we truly understand what is coming in and going out and what we are doing with it, we can start to see where we are employing God's wisdom and where we might be lacking. Because that's the second part. First was evaluate, and the second part is grow in financial wisdom. There are many paths and many ways that you can grow in wisdom. I'm going to walk through one potential path that you could take. This is as Adam Hamilton suggested in his book as well. And part one of that is looking at your life, looking at yourself, and asking, what is my life purpose? What am I here on this world to do? What have I been gifted to do? I guarantee you the answer to that is not simply to make and spend money. Some of us might wish that was the case. No, we have a higher purpose, a higher calling, a calling from God. What's yours? Abraham was called by God, and God said to Abraham that he would be blessed to be a blessing. And in a way, that is what each of our purposes are, but we are each called to live into it differently. In what ways have you been blessed to be a blessing? What is your life purpose? What are you here to do? And do your finances reflect that? 
That's often the hardest part. What do your finances show your life purpose is? If a complete stranger came in and said, hey, I'm going to audit your finances for free today, what would your finances tell them your purpose was? For some of us, it might be going and getting sushi. I really like sushi, okay? (laughs) For some of us, maybe it's a lot of clothing shopping. For some of us, perhaps it's the chaos. (laughs) Never worry about that. (laughs) There are many, many things that we can focus on in this life. And that's okay. But where do our finances fit into our life purpose? Once we can articulate our life purpose, we can learn to use our finances as a tool to accomplish that. Once we articulate our life purpose, we can set goals. We can say, what do I want to achieve towards my life purpose this year? What do I want to achieve towards my life purpose in three years, the rest of my life? We set goals, and then uh, we, we set goals because planning is important. Our passage today from Proverbs 21.5 said that the plans of the diligent lead to abundance, but the hasty come only to want. I appreciated that Erin uh, said this saying in her children's message A failure to plan is a plan to fail. Without a plan, we can far easier fail. Wow, that didn't come out in any form of grammatical sense, but that's okay. Planning is important. It helps us to see the path forward. It helps us to know and be able to measure when we are making progress. Once we have our life purpose articulated and plans for that, we can set financial goals to help us along the way. No matter our life purpose and the goals that we have for that, we cannot live into it fully if we are not also being wise with our finances. Perhaps for you, that's recognizing that while you want to give extravagantly towards whatever charities that you support, You often find you don't have the money set aside, so maybe it's setting aside a special bank account for that, and that is a financial goal that will help you live into your life purpose. Maybe it's recognizing that your budget doesn't reflect your life purpose, and it's altering that and updating that. Perhaps it's saying, I should really start that budget. I never used a budget. I watched my dad as I grew up. He had a budget. He did the balance sheets. He had, oh my gosh, his records were meticulous. I should have probably picked up on it way sooner. But I put it off. It wasn't until after college. I'd met my husband. We had our first kid. We had a house. We had a dog. I was stressed beyond belief. We both had jobs that, came, that brought in income that could support us, and yet I had no idea what was going on. And I was anxious about every penny. So I took a class. I took a class that helped me to lay out a plan, that helped me write a budget to understand where everything went, to understand my needs better so that I could also give better. Being a wise steward is knowing where you are and having a plan for the future so that we can fully live into our purpose as we are called by God. When we make budgets, it's important that we include our tithes and offerings and the the support that you give to charities. They are part of your budget. They are part of your life purpose. Whatever you give, make it part of the plan. Perhaps part of growing in wisdom is learning how to simplify. Maybe there are ways in which you you are living as a prodigal, living extravagantly beyond need. Maybe you should simplify. Maybe I should buy that sushi a little less often. Perhaps as you look and evaluate where you are, you realize that you're not ready for those emergencies. So maybe it's starting an emergency fund, 
And that can feel like a very daunting task, but you just start small and you consistently give into that fund so that someday you can look at it and say, okay, I'm ready. And the weight that that lifts is enormous. Perhaps through your evaluation, you find that you're in debt and you need to get out of that. Perhaps you realize you're not saving towards retirement or towards your kids' college funds and you want to. Maybe that is where you grow in wisdom. There are lots of ways and there are lots of resources out there. Aaron mentioned one of them, Financial Peace University. There are books, there are websites, there are financial coaches and counselors and advisors. There are so many ways to get assistance with things like that. John Wesley summed all of this up really well in a very simple statement. Earn all you can so you can save all you can so you can give all you can. Now, earning all you can didn't mean just go out and find whatever, whatever down and dirty way to get every single last buck you can. No, he, he meant to earn in ways that do not harm anyone, yourself or others. Earn in ways that did not take away from your enjoyment of life. Earn in ways that do not physically or mentally harm you or harm the financial health of others. Saving all we can for, for Wesley meant refraining from needless and frivolous spending. Wesley was very strict on this. But God has put us here to enjoy life. So it doesn't mean don't go out and have the sushi. But it means maybe limit how often. Saving all you can. For Wesley, this meant learning exactly how much he needed to live on throughout the year. And he found out it was 28 pounds. Remember, this was England. I have no idea what that would convert to today or into dollars. I'm sorry, so we're sticking with pounds. So he knew he needed 28 pounds throughout the year. Well, that year he made 30. Well, he lived off 28 and gave away the two. And then the next year he made 60 pounds. Well, he still lived off the 28 and gave away the rest. And the next year his income rose again. He still lived off the 28 and gave away the rest. His example does not take into account the fact that we deal with inflation and rising costs of living. I understand that. And I'm not asking you to stick with what worked in 1990 because it doesn't work today. But evaluate where you are and what you need and what you should save so that then you know what you have to be able to give. When we know what we need, when we evaluate where we are and we use wisdom in our finances, wisdom, a gift of God, when we use it, we will find that we are better able to live out our life purpose in all aspects of our lives. Through our prayers, through our presence, through our service, through our witness, and through our gifts, through our finances. Financial wisdom is found throughout the Bible. God speaks time and time again of the importance of employing wisdom in our finances. God, sp God has spoken through the words of the Old Testament God speaks through Jesus. This is a topic that Jesus talks on a lot throughout his ministry. God has spoken through the letters of the apostles and the lives and the practices of the early church as we read today in our passage from Acts. And God has spoken through believers throughout history and through the words of John Wesley. Why? Why is this so important? Because only when we employ wisdom in our finances can our finances be utilized to the fullest extent that they are intended to be for the mission and ministry of God in our world. Each of us is called to steward what we have been given. Whether it feels like a small gift or a large gift, we are called to steward God's possessions while they are in our hands. 
This week, I encourage you to take the path, to walk through its questions and its readings this week, and ask yourselves, are there ways, are there areas in your life where you are living as a prodigal? I know it's a hard question, but I encourage you to ask it of yourself this week. And to ask yourselves, what can be done to grow in wisdom with our finances and to more completely utilize what we have been given for the glory of God? Utilizing all of ourselves, our finances included, to live into our calling and our mission our purpose as part of God's ministry in the world. It's not an easy task, but it is one we are called to by a God who loves us. Would you pray with me? God, you know all about us, even when we don't. We may not know where every dime went last week, but you know And better than that, you know where it all went last year and the year before. You do not forbid us from having joy in our possessions. In fact, you delight in our having joy. But God, you also know that simply acquiring more and more stuff isn't where we truly find joy. Lord, forgive us for the times when we are wasteful, for the times when we may be spending and living as prodigals. Forgive us for leveraging our future in order to have pleasure today. And help us to be good managers of the talents that you have given us, to earn without doing harm, to provide for ourselves, to still save, and to be generous and willing to share, to be kingdom-minded and focused on accomplishing your purposes for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to stand as together we sing Only King Forever.
as we go forth from this place, receive this blessing. May you go forth knowing that you are named by God and you are claimed by God and you are filled with the love, the peace, and the wisdom that comes from God. Go forth in the love of God and serve others. Amen.